Good afternoon and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola Willis from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader, and I'm joined today by Debbie Rivers. She is a dating and relationship expert, and we're going to talk about the idea of ghosting uh, in business and in life. Uh, How are you? And introduce yourself and how you got into this wonderful world of (laughs) dating and relationship (laughs) expertism (laughs) okay so my name is Debbie Rivers I'm a dating relationship coach and I often tell people I got into this by insanity right (laughs) had I realized I I basically was married for 21 years and found myself single after 21 years and I went I went to a speed dating event and I didn't want to meet someone but I'm like that was so much fun and I probably talked to my friends about it for ages and I'm like I'd love to do that and I never wanted to be a business owner but we where I worked at the time I was next to a a pub and we were talking to the owner he goes run it here and I'm like okay all I need is a website I need some people how hard is that going to be so I randomly started a speed dating business and you know 11 years later I'm still going so I went from running singles events to actually helping people be successful because it goes so much more than just meeting someone yeah. which yeah you know you sometimes think oh it's just I've just got to meet my person but there, there's so much in this superficial world nowadays where I see good people miss each other all the time and I think my own personal journey that when I went back out and I did want a relationship I kind of made all these mistakes along the way so when I coach people help them not make the same mistakes I did. Oh, I just think that's amazing because this whole idea of dating again after being in relationships for so long is just scary. I have seen it yeah. with many people in my family, in my friend zone, and to get back out there again can be daunting, especially with swipe yeah. right, swipe left. You know, people easily move on, don't they? And they don't yeah. tend to give the time to the relationship that it probably mm-hmm. needs to build. Uh, and I just get so frustrated seeing people like you said good people missing out on these relationships because people just want to swipe left swipe right can't be bothered so I love the fact that you've taken this on as your mission to really help people in this space and to provide them the the opportunity to actually do speed dating I think it's amazing Uh, now I know and you and I have spoken about how ghosting can really be the same in business and Mm -hmm. in life we tend to have to learn the skills of, uh, or at least understand why people ghost and things like that. So that's why I wanted you on today because, well, you're a small business owner yourself and you also deal in how people need to structure their lives to avoid this ghosting. So let's talk about it for small business. What is ghosting? We've all heard it. Everyone's talking about it online. How does it um, come about in your life that you see people ghosted and what is it? Okay, so ghosting is literally disappearing without a trace, right? And it's like a modern day phenomenon that did start in dating and then it's spilled over into business and friendships. And, you know, technology has made this easy. What would have once been considered rude is now just what we all do. Like, and ghosting can happen after one message or it can happen you know midway through a relationship or at the end of a relationship and that's friendship business and dating all the same and it it can be quite traumatic when you're ghosted when you don't really understand because people literally disappear without a trace leaving you going what have I done wrong what what what's about me why aren't I good enough? Like it leaves all those unanswered questions, but technology just makes it easy. I couldn't imagine, right, going up to someone and saying hello and then walking away and ignoring me. People generally don't do that, but in the technology world, we literally don't answer messages. We literally stop talking to people. (laughs) An example of the new age dating scene that I've had, because I'm 49, married 30 years, it's just, you know, it's just obviously um, not in my realm, but... I had a, um, my assistant that worked with me had the dating scene out there all the time. And she had a guy that had, was not that interested anymore, was a bit aloof, told her, no, not into it anymore, and blocked. That was uh-huh. it. No explanation, no reason why. She thought it had been going well. And you get the block. 
So you don't even get the chance to have that reply. Now that I think is what was taken away from her. And as business owners, we sometimes can be like that as well. We put in all the effort. We think that this is going well. And then we get the ghosted treatment, the no replies, the unread, all those things. And you're right. You start to think, is it me? Is yeah. there something I'm doing that's wrong? But like you said, now the opportunity to just block and run is way easier for a lot of people than dealing with it. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest reasons people ghost is it's easier. They don't want to have a difficult conversation. They don't want to tell you why. And for a lot of them, I, I, dating and business, you know, when, when you'll give the reasons why you don't want to work with someone or why you don't want to date someone, mm -hmm. people then argue with you. <laughs> so people go, look, it's just easier. I don't want the argument. I don't want to get into that. And really, when someone goes to you, it's an answer in itself. But I don't always that think that has to be the definitive end either. Mm. You know, in, in business, because you can, in business, you can reach out and call someone if they choose to answer the phone. And you can try and find out the reasons why. Sometimes they will choose not to talk to you too. And, and you've just got to let that go and not make it about yourself, really. Yeah, because I know the old saying, I did a sales course many years ago, and they said, a lead is not dead until they're actually dead. So <laughs> it's something where sometimes a no is just not a no right now. And, yes. and we know that and we have to get into that mindset of a no is only a no right now. And it's a matter of giving the person space or maybe they're not ready quite yet. And that can happen in life as well. Okay. Um, but the idea that, you know, people can just block and run is a little bit scary. We were yeah. talking before about emails. We get so many emails now. Mm -hmm. It can be that way of overwhelm and you tend to either, I tend to snooze a lot of emails on my Gmail. Mm -hmm. So I'll snooze them until I'm ready and then snooze them again. And it can yeah. be and does look like ghosting for some because I haven't forgotten you. I've just had to move you because I'm in another season of what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm trying myself to get back into that habit of replying to say that. A quick one. <laughs> hey, <laughs> flat out, I'll get back to you next week instead of just snoozing and moving. And then people don't know I've done that. They're like, and then you get an email, hey. Are we yeah. all, what's happening? Are we all good? And you can save that by just a little reply, little things like that. So, yeah. you know, why do people ghost, do you think? What's what's the okay. thing behind it? I mean, that was my little explanation that could yeah. be like ghosting <laughs> without meaning to. Yeah. So I think there's around seven, seven or eight reasons that people ghost, and I'll go through them really quickly. So the first reason people ghost is because they just don't want what you've got to offer whether that's dating, whether that's in business. You know, as a dating coach, if you're in a relationship, you're not going to want to work with me. If you've got a happy relationship, you're not going to want to work with me. So they ghost because they just don't want what you're offering. And same in dating, right? They're just not interested. The second reason people ghost is they don't know, like, and trust you. And, and this is a big deal in, in this world now. We will answer emails from someone we know and like. We won't be rude to them because we've built a relationship with them. Mm. The third reason is people don't want you. They don't want a relationship with you specifically, that you're not the right fit for them, you're not the right personality for them. That one's a bit hard to deal with, but we're not everyone's cup of tea. Mm. The fourth reason people ghost is you're not clear about what you offer. Like if they go to your profile, they don't know what you offer. They've got no idea. And you've written it about you and not about what they want. Mm. Yep. And, you know, the next reason on, aside from that, it's not clear. Mm. It's really not clear. They've got no clear way to contact you or even understand. And I mean, I see that a lot in dating. Like people write this profile to appeal to, <laughs> appeal to them. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. what they don't want and it just doesn't appeal to the person they want the next reason is they don't know they need you <laughs> yes right yeah. but it, they don't know that they've got the problem and you're not really talking their language so they understand it the last reason is it's just easier and mm. we're lazy we're busy and a lot of people will just go because it's easier yeah, I love that. That is aha moments, those last three, because it is, it, you know, 
we talk about understanding uh, when I work with clients, understanding your why so that you can be clear on what it is you offer yeah. and you find your people. And that comes in life as well. If you're mm-hmm. not about who you are or you're filtering your pictures or as you say, your bio is written and it's not really what you're about, of course you're going to get different people or no people because you're not really. (laughs) Yeah, and that's why people wonder why they get into these relationships or business um, Mm -hmm. arrangements and they're just not aligned and you get bad outcomes, people go to court, people, you know, pull out of contracts and you wonder why it's happening. It's something, again, to look at in life and in business because it is huge and people do ghost you and not understanding what it is you offer. Um, I've been guilty of that. Sometimes I look back and I think, why? I'm awesome. Why would people not want to do this thing I'm talking about? And then I realized that I haven't really given enough info on it to make it a hell yes. And I think we all know when we've had a hell yes, whether it's been a person or an offer, we've just gone, that person I like, I trust, and I get it what they want and what they offer. Simple. And if we can get to that stage, that has to be great. But it's just understanding where that is for you, isn't it? And you know what I I would say, and and I would say this to anyone that's listening that's single, right? Dating is a lot like marketing. Like I watch all the marketers on Instagram and Facebook and I'm like, really is the same. As a single person, you're the product. And I know Coke sell their brown sugary drink and their tagline is taste the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not they're not talking about what they are or what it is or any of that stuff. It's how the person's going to feel when they're with you. And so in a like in a dating profile, particularly men want to picture themselves in the woman's life. They don't want you know no fish, no hookups, no this. It, it's not appealing. And the same with business, right? We're we're not telling them how we do something. We're not, uh, we're showing them what they're going to feel when they work with us. Yeah, it's the outcome. Sell the sizzle, not the steak, that sort of stuff. (laughs) Because I used to always say as an example to my clients, um, you know, I used to work with carpentry companies and like I'd we'd spoken about before and, um, you know, they're selling a deck. Okay, it's not sexy, it's a deck. But you're selling what she's going to feel like entertaining with her family on a summer's night out the back at the moment you know she's looking at a pile of sand and (laughs) she's feeling really deflated so you're selling how if you put a deck out that back your life is going to change so you sell the sizzle not the steak because the deck's not sexy but the idea of having the outdoor area that is the envy of everyone and you're just loving life well that's what you want and the same with anything you've got to sort of find out what that emotive part is and then sell that so the ghosting part can come from not being clear on that won't it absolutely and I mean again they don't know that they want what you've got to offer because you're not selling in a way that's going to get through to them so Mm -hmm. those really basic stuff can stop people ghosting you Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is where you need to dive deep, isn't it? Onto, you know, what it is you really want, why you do what you do, all those foundations that I find a lot of people in business and in life don't tend to spend the time trying to find out. And then what happens is they go hard on the marketing, the advertising, the going out on dating sites, the swiping left and right without being clear on what they want from life. You know, yeah. what is your business? What is, what's the vision? What's the, what does it want to have? What impact? And the same with you. What do you want from life? What, what, what impact do you want? And who do you want to bring into your life? And the clearer you are, the less likely you are to be ghosted because people will be attracted yeah. to your journey. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, that person that you want to attract, it needs to, it absolutely needs to appeal to them. And I, I do see people dating and they're not understanding the target market any more than a business is understanding the target market. And when you nail that, you nail the results and you get in front of the right people really, really easily. And the people that don't fit that will ghost you and you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not you know, you know who you are. And you know what you're trying to attract. And if they're ghosting, there's a reason. They're just not part of your tribe. And you need to, you know, go out and get in front, like you say, in front of your ideal person as a business, your ideal client. Where are they? You know, where do they hang out? 
what's their favorite things to do you know so you're showing up in those places because you like them too because of course they're your ideal client and making sure that you're the person that that is providing what it is they're looking for because isn't that the whole idea to become a match and <laughs> yin and yang and all that sort of stuff and and you yeah, want to have absolutely. dream clients just as you want to have uh, dream people in your life and and some of the key to that in business and in dating is go and talk to that dream client or yes. them talk to her if you're a woman and you want to date a man go show that profile to them and see if it appeals get some really honest feedback on it because you know I see women value education and they go I want this this and this guys don't guys will value kindness over the education they don't they don't care so find out what they want and reflect that back to them. And it's kind of a basic marketing thing, but whether you're dating, whether you're in business, take the time to do oh, that's market research. <laughs> it's so it's so true though. It's such a simple thing that we don't even think about. Because the same reason you write a profile, you tend to write it as if you're writing it for you. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. forget that that is not how it should be. And that's why you tend to show up in the places where they are. And if you have friends or you have um, people in that um, sphere, ask them, you know, what mm -hmm. if you've got guy friends or girls uh, friends and you they're struggling and say, well, what is it you're looking for? You know, what is it that, and you'll find a lot of them, isn't it? It comes down to, you know, loyalty and um, just having someone who's kind Sometimes yeah. it's just as simple as that. And you're putting out all this other stuff because you think <laughs> yeah. it's what they want. Um, when a lot of the time it may just be as simple as they just want someone who's kind and who's loyal and can yeah. have those attributes come out and how they show up. And Absolutely. Uh, very similar to having a business where you show up as you and you attract your tribe of people. And I think it needs to be clear on what that is, but you're right. Research is the first step in finding yeah. out what they actually want, not what you think they <laughs> want. The amount of businesses yeah. I've seen that go around saying what their client want when they haven't actually asked them oh. is yeah. really surprising out there. And then they go, yeah. they come to me and they say, well, nothing's working. You know, no one's actually <laughs> engaging with me. And I'm like, well, have you actually asked them what they want or what they look for and what it is you do? Well, no, I, I know what they want. Do you now? <laughs> and I think that comes to dating. I know I know what a guy wants. I know what a girl wants. Well, do you now? How, how many have you actually asked? And, and they don't. And again, you know, another simple thing in business and in dating is pictures. Pictures are key. Look like you. <laughs> Don't try. I mean, I need new pictures, but I look at my pictures. You've got to update these things all the time because we change. And you know what's really interesting with men when I talk to men? They're really simple creatures, right? They'll go, oh, she likes spicy food. Tick. She, she likes to walk. Tick. She, she likes to drink bound spirits. Tick. It's just maybe they've been with someone that didn't like what they liked. They want just to meet someone who likes the same things. So they'll look for the same interest. It's a really, really simple thing yeah, that we I, overlook the simple. I think so, because ultimately, don't we all just want someone we can hang out with that we enjoy? Mm -hmm. So, and that's the same with business. You just want a dream client who just gets mm -hmm. you and, and knows that you can give them the solution they're chasing. And yeah. then they're not drama. They pay you on time. They are... Uh, I refer you like nothing on earth and they just love hanging out with you now yeah. that's the ideal business and the ideal relationship I remember yeah. I had a next door neighbor who had um, got divorced later in life and was back on the scene and um, you know these women that he would go out with he would drive past because she didn't look anything like <laughs> the picture I remember yeah. multiple times him telling us and laughing because he drove past because he didn't recognize them <laughs> And you just think, well, how is that even a good start? Yeah. This poor yeah. bloke has no clue, like, who he's even picking up because <laughs> of the fact you look completely different. I mean, guys have done it too. It's not it's not a one-way thing. But that yeah. thing of not being authentically you, uh, I know my girlfriend, uh, my younger, um, she's a lot younger, but she had thick thighs, no lies on her bio. <laughs> she was like, that's what I have and that's what I want. So that's what she put on there because she was sick of 
you know, people then meeting her and realizing, you know, maybe the picture was not what quite what they thought. So she's like, yeah. well, I'm owning it. This is what I've got. If that's what you're after, you know, then um, <laughs> that's what I'm going to give you. I don't want any <laughs> lies, no games and thick thighs for the win. So if, you, if you're happy with that, let's catch up. I'm, I'm curious how that worked because sometimes <laughs> um, the no lies thing doesn't always work for people in their profiles because we still want to paint the picture yeah. with genuine photos that look like you. So it, it's kind of a bit of a balancing act. Oh, like, it, it was me, hard work. It was hard work. There were guys that were, you know, um, the one and then they would ghost. Mm -hmm. um, they would just gradually once a week and then just gradually, oh, I've got stuff going on. I'm, you know, stuff's happening in my life. I just don't have the time. So yeah. it gradually just goes down into the slow ghost, I call it. We yes. just have the, all oh, right, I get it. He's just not into me thing. Starts out real good and then just goes. And that tends to be the overall theme for a lot of my younger friends at the moment. The guys just get busy or they get bored and they just keep swiping. And it's, um, yeah, it's really hard. A lot of my friends in their late 20s are finding this at the moment. So it's just hard work um, to try and find that balance, like you said. Yeah. Oh, no, I think some people, like people on dating apps, they don't want a relationship. Yeah. So they like the excitement and they'll just do it over and over again. I think when I work with people, I'm like, let's spot the signs of those people so you don't waste time on them because it's pretty, once you know what that is, it can be easier to spot because it is nothing to do with them. Often it's just they're attracting the wrong target market. Yeah, and we do that in business all the time. Yeah. We put the wrong signals out and we get yeah. the... Ones that don't, don't pay us, the drama clients, all the ones that just yeah. want everything. I want leads. I want things straight away. Why don't I have this? Well, you haven't done all this work we said we would do. You know, all those things where they're yeah. just not aligned and you'll know it pretty quick because, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think. And also, yeah, if you have that thing of having a type and then having a type that you know is not a good type, <laughs> You know, the, the, the big, um, my girlfriends have the big guy with the beard and all the tats and, you know, there are lovely ones, but there tend to be a lot of ones that aren't and you just keep, sometimes you've got to reassess in business yeah. as well. Is this Absolutely. working for me? How's it working for me? Might not be really best, what, you know, what's best for me, yeah. whether that's what you're offering, the type of business that you do, uh, your clients you're dealing with. You've got to reassess every time, don't you, too? Oh, absolutely. And people people don't do that in business or in dating. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and again, when you go, look, I'm just going to be me, what's and all, it, <laughs> that doesn't always work in business either, does it? <laughs> if, you're, if you're showing your frustrated self or you're showing you know, the not so good side of yourself, people aren't going to be attracted to that either. No, it's definitely a balance of real world, but inspiration if you possibly can, because people yeah. are already, their lives and businesses are hard enough. So they like to see that people are having similar struggles, but that they too are working um, on that growth you know how you know how are you doing stuff not getting stuck into that oh woe is me cycle because that can get really hard and you'll find that a lot of people will unfollow or um just stay away from the drama I always yeah. had a few clients that were um that just weren't aligned at the beginning with really heavy drama so mm -hmm. you can't tend to get them out of that um into a more positive mindset if they're really stuck in it it's a it's a hard sell in that regard and I imagine it's like that when you're dating. If somebody's just always woe is me and doesn't have that positive side yeah. of things will will pick up, I'm positive. Can't be a very good dating scene. No, no. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think I think the other thing that people will ghost is the type of messages that we send. Mm -hmm. And you probably see on, on Instagram and, and LinkedIn where people send you the big spam messages. No one likes the meat or maybe some people like spam. No one likes the email. And, you know, that sort of approach never works. No, the cold DMs are never really a vibe. Um, and you can also tell if people are only talking to you for one reason as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very clear. So I think it's definitely about making relationships. And, and I still feel it's showing up where your ideal person or client is yeah. and really creating those relationships. Absolutely. Because 
you know, they have friends or colleagues or, you know, that, that would know you and go, oh, you are perfect for them. And yes. the same business, oh, my friend needs that and you'd be perfect. And yeah. more organic um, business generation or dating in that fact of, you know, you're really having better matches then because people know you yeah. and they know what you do and then they go, great, that's exactly what I need. Instead of the cold DMs of, hey, I do this, I'm great, I think we should work together. Oh, those LinkedIn messages are the best. Oh, they're just awful, aren't they? they they're, well, really and then awful. They, they're all automated and then they send the automated follow-up. Oh, I didn't hear from you. So <laughs> I got one today on email that I ghosted. <laughs> it was a cold one that I knew no one of these software places I knew nothing about so I'm not even responding I don't even respond to them and but they send me the automated follow-up you know and the one today was so I assume you're not interested so I, <laughs> well you can go jump off a bridge like so that sort of stuff is never well maybe it does it just doesn't work for me I must work for a very small percentage of people who want what they offer but it, it doesn't work at all in fact it's really really off-putting yeah. And, and I find people in business, I just ignore those. Although I, I did work at one stage with a business coach and she used to message those people and end up getting them as her clients. <laughs> Look, if you've got <laughs> swagger enough to get out there and do that, I know that um, a software company in Netherlands um, had software that was in. I was interested in. I signed up, you know, for the uh, whatever it is, the free look at it. So, of course, they had more reason to ring me and things like that. Mm -hmm. But they would keep ringing and I'm like, I don't have time. You know, it's more I don't have time, not that I didn't yeah. want it. I don't have time. Stop ringing me and emailing me. So I ghosted. Well, <laughs> they kept ringing and they kept emailing. And then eventually I picked up the phone and I was like, yep, yeah, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up using the software and I've had it for four years. Oh, wow. And it costs me a lot, but it's fantastic software. But mm -hmm. they were just determined that it was going to happen <laughs> and it did. But, yeah, sometimes it works. But I think that's only if you really want what it is and Absolutely. then you're just busy. Um, then that tactic might work if they can yeah. sense that you do want it but you're just time poor. Then they're just like, well, just jump on a quick half hour one and we'll just go through and, you know, I'll show you how easy it is. Oh, fine. <laughs> Maybe that's how dating works. You just have to be persistent along the end. Well, I, no, sometimes that can be harassment. So oh. that's a fine line, isn't it? You don't I, want any of that stuff. I sometimes think just because you can message someone doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Or you don't think about how you message. I, one of the best messages I ever got on LinkedIn was a guy that sent me, he was a, a coach who coached dating relationship coaches. But he, he just sent me a voice message, not selling me anything, just going, oh, my God, I lived in Perth and, you know, I had an ice cream in Fremantle and talked about stuff that I would know and was quite interesting and just said, oh, I've got this group. Why don't you go pop over and have a look at it? His approach was so wonderful that I almost worked with him, but he changed what he did. <laughs> so he changed that's working great. with me. Yeah. But it it's, was so authentic and so real that it was engaging. And it's not, I've had other people that will message you, particularly in those multi-platform layers where they're being your friend, but you know that they're being friendly only to sell you something. Yeah. And to me, that feel, to me, that feels icky. It's like the guy that's only getting to know the girl to have sex. It doesn't feel good. It feels dirty, right? <laughs> and you know straight up. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're even hiding it. They're just, you can yeah. tell they're just talking to you to get something more. And yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think it's a long, I still feel it's a bit like a long game. If you can make those relationships, you're likely to remember that person on LinkedIn or you're likely to remember that person you've met somewhere and more likely to be intrigued as to what it is they do or why they do it. And uh, yeah. I think that's a great starting point if you're cold, as in you don't know each other from anywhere. Um, and hence why, you know, the, the conversations on chats when you first meet someone are sort of intriguing. You, you want to know what they're all about and you want to know that they're not just 
after one thing, whether it be your business or whatever, you yeah. want to know what they're about and, and how they can help you, whether, you know, they're going to help you with, you know, whatever it is your problem is in business or whether they're going to be a great partner for how you mm-hmm. want to run your life. Um, but ghosting is just something that is part of our lives now. But yeah. I think we have to go back to the point of what are we doing in regards to our messaging, um, you know, how are we putting ourselves out there if ghosting is a major part of um, what's happening in your life or business right now. Uh, ghosting needs to be addressed but not taken on personally all the yeah. time. But you do need to it's going to happen to everyone. Yeah. And, you know, I've been asked in the past, how can people avoid ghosting? Well, you can change some of what you do, but people will still ghost. It's- yeah, and it's a human it's trait a too. People don't want conflict. And yeah. in this day and age, like we talked about before, how easy is it to block and leave? So mm-hmm. that option is now there. So people will always take it or the email that just gets binned and never gets seen again. But it doesn't mean you stop trying. Yes. Because your people, if your message is right, will find you. So Thank if you. you do continue to put yourself out there or continue to make relationships via DMs or LinkedIn, but the right way, you're more likely to stand out because you won't be one of those multiple people (laughs) that send those stupid ass messages that people hate. You'll be different. People are, oh, okay, that's new. I haven't seen that before. And the same with, you know, if you pop into someone's DMs and you can see they're having a trouble on Instagram or something and with their, and you're like, hey, just wanted to pop in. I saw you with this, that, and the other. How about trying this, that, or the other? It doesn't take long and it's genuine. And then, yeah. of course, you're going to be that person that stays in their brain for later. Exactly. Um, you know, when you when they are looking for it, it's, it's a long-term game. It feels long, but well, it, it does, does pay off. And it is building relationships. I know that I've been in business for almost, you know, 11 years now, and I've built relationships over 10 years with people yeah. that I know, like, and trust. I'll refer to them. They'll refer to me. We've never been each other's customers, but it, it it's that long game of, of being surprising, being genuine, being yourself and getting to know people and you don't know what's going to happen down the track. I, It always makes me laugh when I go to business networking compared to a dating event, right? People will walk into a dating event, look around the room and they go, there's no one here for me. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine doing that at a business networking? It, it's not about whether there's someone there for you or, or someone's going to be your customer. It's about genuine relationships and being curious about real people and being human. And having conversations. I mean, I love networking events for just having real conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may never work together with, um, you know, people in the room, but I've made so many friends in business um, mm-hmm. so if I'm having a bad day, they'll message me, say, Hey, you got this, or Hey, what about this or that? But they got you back. And that's what I think we have to realize. It's not always about the sale, or it's not always about getting the perfect person, because if you're in a room and you're yourself and you make wonderful conversations with people, mm-hmm. how do you know they don't have your right person? That's Absolutely. their neighbor, their brother-in-law, their friend. How do you not know that and to be so superficial to make that choice as you walk in is closing so many doors I can't understand why people can't just talk because the amount of openings to new business I've had or just good friendships at these events I've never had anywhere else and I think that these dating events like you run and you know people need to be open don't they about more than just themselves the longer game it's a long it's always a longer game yeah yeah, I just, um, I think that with ghosting, uh, we know that it's going to happen. We know that we can't always take it, um, that it's our fault. You know, we've done something wrong because that's just life and people get busy. Follow up if you know they're interested. They may just be busy. I think set yourself that sort of structure, whatever that looks like. And if you are fully ghosted, well, then that's that done. Um, But remember, a lead is not dead until they're actually dead. So give them some time (laughs) and a few months. And maybe if you touch base later on, you might have, um, you know, in a nice way, obviously. Hey, we chatted, you know, three months ago. Not sure of, you know, what's happening in your life now. Might be able to, you know, whatever. Or um, it's just that matter of knowing that maybe it has something to do with your messaging your focus should be on maybe looking at, you know, 
what it, what's your ideal client really want? You know, what does your ideal partner really want? And, and how are you showing up for that, I think, is also the takeaway that you can do something about. True. And maybe, I don't know, maybe get someone to audit what you do rather than just look at your own eyes. And audit's probably the wrong word, but put their eyes over it. Whether that's your dating profile, whether that's the business thing, because you can't see what you can't see. Oh, and you, you don't always know what you don't know, do you? And I mean, you're a, a networking, a, a marketing person. Yeah. So you would see that very easy. I help people market themselves. I can see very easy what mm -hmm. they can't see. And it can save you a whole world of, you know, okay. wasted time and pain, right? And, and yeah, like sometimes it's much more efficient to get an expert to give you that honest feedback. Yeah, well. and ask for it. Actually, I, yeah. I remember I put in um, a net, my networking group into the Fusion Facebook page. Those that have, you know, worked with me or know me or have met me at, at events, what three words would describe me? Mm -hmm. Because I, I really wanted to know how I was showing up. You yeah. know, how do people, after they've met me or worked with me, what, what do they think? You know, I think that was just an exercise I needed to do this year just to start getting into what content I was putting out and, and how I was showing up. And it really does give you an idea, um, not that you ask people that, but, you know, what is the questions you can ask that will give you the answers? And, and a mentor, um, you know, whether they be a friend or family member that you can trust to ask about yourself or in business, whether it's a, a business friend or a mentor or yeah. a coach or any of those things where you can put it out there. Because I've had many people go, oh, yeah, but what about if we did that and I was like I never thought about that yeah and then, you know, that's real-time feedback that is valuable in changing yeah. how you show up and I just think you can't uh, you can't that's so underrated the response so of having someone outside of it because a lot of the time like when I work with clients I, I see the picture and I can move it around in my mind to where it needs to work whereas yeah. when you're in it you, you don't have that aspect. You're just in it. You need someone who can look at it and move the pieces around for you. And you go, yeah, oh, my gosh, agree. why did I not see that? And I think sometimes we'll go to our friends and our friends want to be nice. Supportive. Supportive. <laughs> so they're not always honest, right? Or there is the other thing where we do think we're being a certain way. Maybe we think we're nice and kind, but we're really direct and straightforward. Yes. So how we think we're coming across and how we're coming across. I see it with people I work with dating and I see them at my events and they'll tell me they're being one way and I'm like, oh, no, you're not being that way at all. <laughs> it's so true because uh, people don't sometimes realise that they are very direct and it changes how people interact with you. I had somebody I worked with, a new person at a um, one of the agencies that I do work with and the emails were very direct and I said I thought have I done something wrong like it just felt so direct and then I met them in person and I was like oh you are just direct like <laughs> it's not just because I've done something you're just very direct yeah. and I'm not like that so the match was very affronting to me but mm -hmm. it made me realize it wasn't me. It was just how she was. Yeah. So I can deal with that. It, you know, if I, but if she'd ask somebody, how am I? She probably thought she was just, you know, doing business, but she didn't realize how direct she was mm -hmm. in written form as well. And it's very off putting. Like, you know, how you get a response to an email and it has noted full stop. <laughs> and you go, what, what did I so now as a joke some of my contractors I send them an email that says noted.com and they laugh because they know what I'm doing but you know sometimes you've just got to assess how you do stuff yeah exactly and and if something's not working you've absolutely got to do that yeah. so I do think it's easy for people to go well the problem is out there that no one wants to buy anything in business and it's hard economic times or dating's just a, a shit show or like it's it's brutal but there's things that people can do to change that. Yeah, because you, you, what's the, that saying? You, you know, you're not in charge of what other people think or whatever, but, you know, you can just, it's how you react to it. Yeah. You know, it, how do you react to things? You know, you can't control everyone and everything, but how do you react and how do you show up? And I think that that in business as well is all you can do. How yes. do you react to things? How are you going to react to being ghosted? 
what are you going to do about it if it becomes a big thing? Obviously, there's an issue there, something to do with your messaging or how you're showing up. If it's just every so often, well, that's life, that's business. Don't get sucked in by it because it can become soul crushing. It's the same as no in business. When you're new to business and you get your first no, soul crushing. Because you, li- you think it's literally you suck and everything you've ever done in life, you suck at. <laughs> that's what it feels like. It feel like that. And maybe they're just not ready for you at that time. You know, it's not, but mm-hmm. if it happens a lot, yeah. Start assessing what you're showing up with and what offers you have and in personal life, how you're showing up. Because, yeah, there might be something there to address. But originally, just keep showing up, keep reassessing and keep seeing how you can change how you react to things. Because, you know, if you fly off the handle or you're one of these that goes into a spiral really easily, well, that doesn't help anyone. So, you know, get help for that, like yourself. You know, get someone who can help you navigate the scene. If it's in marketing, you get a specialist like a mentor like me that can see the bigger picture Uh and get you to the end goal quicker, which is like what you say with dating. If you have a specialist, then somebody can help you navigate that. You're not having to make it all up as you go along. There's always support in life and business. And I think people forget that, that there is always somebody. You're not alone and you don't have to navigate these things alone because life's too hard. And, I mean, (laughs) gosh, if there is help, take it because, you know, life is a huge thing. Business mm-hmm. and family together is always a hard, you know, juggle. So if it's you're so juggling hard. with one or the other, yeah, it Definitely. affects both. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yes. if your, you know, personal life's struggling, well, then your business will struggle. Your business is struggling, your personal life. So they're very yeah. intertwined, which is why we're talking today, because ghosting is very much on both levels and both can affect Absolutely. you. Now, which yeah. leads me to the point, how can people work with you? How can they find you? And what things can you help people with um, in regards to, I imagine, relationship in the dating side? Um, yeah, mm-hmm. so let people know how they can find you. Okay, so you can find me at um, on Instagram at Debbie Rivers Dating Expert. And I've got a personal brand website, which is all of the coaching that I do and how I do that. So basically, when it comes to dating and relationships, I help people make dating fun again. You know, I get what it's like because I've been there. You know, I came out of a 21-year marriage and I dated. I'm in a relationship I'm happy with now. And I love helping people do that. And some of those really small, simple things have changed everything for the person. And, you know, feed on my Instagram when I see those happy couples. I'm really happy. But what I have learned too, that it is one thing, you come out of a divorce and you go into a new relationship and you think that it's just a matter of meeting the person. Well, that's that's when your stuff will come out, right? Yeah. And, and some of the patterns that you might have done in your old relationship that didn't work can come up. And I don't know, relationships are the most important thing. So I do help people, you know, have those tools to navigate and create those, create, find and keep a healthy relationship. Because I don't know, like the average couple spends 10 minutes a day talking to each other and mostly about their to-do list, more time on social media. So I I love working with people to help them do that. I still run face-to-face events. Um, I usually run a speed dating once a month, a singles party once a month. And, you know, people go into them with high expectations and they might come away disappointed. But I just like to still give people a face-to-face way to meet yeah, I think I think it's underrated. I think the the face to face and the same with the networking face to face in yeah. business. I think it's underrated how powerful that is. So I think it's wonderful that you still provide that opportunity because I remember back in the day there used to be the Valentine's Day balls and and you know everyone would go and you'd be assigned a magic date, you know. <laughs> and I remember all the excitement of my girlfriends back in there about who their date would be, yeah. and then they ended up swapping most of the dates if they got there and <laughs> or finding someone else's date that had been abandoned. Yeah. And but the fun was there, and I think we forget with all this swiping yeah. that there's still fun in socializing. <laughs> It can still be fun. So in Valentine's Day is coming up. This Saturday I've, I've got like a Valentine's Day ball type thing um, where people can meet face-to-face and I still love doing that. I still feel sad when people miss each other because, <laughs> you know, I know the people that come and go, this person is great, but, you know, it's just providing some way that you can still meet in real life, which I, I, I love still it. love. Yeah, and I can hear the passion in your voice about it and I think that's what it's all about. You find your why 
and what gives you light and then you can impart that onto others and help them and I think that's what finding a business that lights you up is what it's all about because then you're likely to show up and really make an impact and and that's what I try and do with people that start their businesses do that work first you know what really lights you up and why do you do what you do and then really start uh, planning on how you can have an impact and you've done that I think that's amazing um so everyone go check Debbie out online um through the website and their socials and I'll put all the links in the show notes for the podcast yeah and um I'll be thinking of all those couples on Valentine's Day because this podcast will come out after that. So I'll be thinking about them all and seeing, imagining if everyone's, you know, been able to find their dream partner. But it's been great about just giving some clarity on on ghosting and and knowing that it's a big thing out there now, but um, giving the tools is the main thing. And you've given seven reasons why people ghost. And I think some of those, um, just go back and listen to them because they're really important um, on how you can actually make a difference in preventing ghosting or at least understanding why some of them might be doing that. And I think knowledge is power. So if you know more, you're more likely to be able to find the tools to um, fix it or just go talk to you. And then you'd have the toolkit and the support, which is (laughs) even better. Uh, Thank you so much. And um, no doubt I'll see you at some networking event shortly. I look forward to it. (laughs) Thanks so much for having me. Thanks.